uh, I'm very happy to uh, introduce uh, uh, my colleague and friend, uh, Antonio Garuso, professor at the University of Palermo, uh, that uh, today um, will uh, um, tell us uh, all the secrets uh, of the uh, GSSPS uh, in the Mediterranean, the Pliocoternary GSP, GSPSS in the Quaternary. Thank you very much, Antonio, and uh, the show is yours. Thank you very much, Eli, and thank you for your invitation uh, in this uh, webinar conference. So today I will show you some uh, beautiful picture from Sicily, and uh, above all, uh, something about okay I'm, I'm searching my presentation okay perfect did you see uh okay no, no stai condividendo did, you ancora. did you see now my presentation oh. ilaria yes, okay. Yes, yes, yes. okay thank you okay so Okay, it's really important to, uh, before starting, the, explain the definition of global boundary stratotype section and point, because some people probably uh, know very well, but other, other ones non, uh, don't, not, uh, don't know very well the definition of GSSP. So it's really important to have a good section where we can touch a boundary where we can uh, subdivide two stages. It's really important to have a good exposure of the our section. It's really important. It's also really important, and um, that the the road for arriving in the section is good. It's easy. And uh, another thing, really important thing, is that we need the layers below and above the boundary. Uh, in 1990, uh, in 1977, um, the U, uh, International Union of Geosciences, uh, Geological Sciences proposed to use the GSSP because the stratotype sometimes is not really, is really impossible to have a, a whole section where we have the whole stage. So sometimes we have only a few meters where we have the, the boundary of a, a particular stage. Sometimes we have beautiful successions, but it's really, uh, it's not so easy to find good section where we have a 100 meter thick uh, of, a, for instance, uh, Langian, Burdigalian, Soravalian. So for this, for this reason, the commission proposed to use a, a boundary line where we can touch passage between, uh, for instance, uh, my uh, Messinian Zanclian or uh, Piacentian and Gelasian. See, also is, uh, is really also important to have a good biostatigraphy for aminifera, nanofossils, sometimes mollusk, in order to define uh, the boundary. But uh, the paleomag is uh, fundamental to recognize sometimes the, the boundary of some sections. For this reason, uh, I will explain to you in the the last uh, in the next um, uh, slides because some sections were abandoned and now we use other sections. Okay, this is an example of a GSP, a Diacarian GSP in Australia, where we have the golden spike that mark very well the the boundary the, between two uh, two stages. In a, another example. This is the GSP Permian Triassic boundary in China. China Chinese are really fantastic. Please, they construct a, a ma magnific monument for the GSSP. You will see in Sicily the situation is completely different from China. So in Sicily, we have three. Actually, we have three uh, uh, stratotypes, uh, GSP stratotype, Heraclea Minoa section, proposed by Ilgen Langerais. Uh, for the first time in 1993. We have also Punta Piccola section where we propose the Zanclian-Apiacentian boundary. 
and the Monte San Nicola section uh, proposed by Rio et al. and Castrodori in 2000. The really important starting uh, from because the, the, the base of the Zanclian uh, was proposed on the basis of the hand of Messilian salinity crisis. Uh, Giuliano Ruggeri uh, proposed for the first time um, the theory of desiccation. He proposed the theory in 1967 uh, and proposed the theory on the basis of some findings of, for instance, ostracotes, some particular species uh, typical of hippoaline conditions that uh, came from paratetic uh, uh, area. I, I don't know if you if you see my um, my laser. Did you see my laser in uh, the screen? Probably. Yes. I don't know. Yes. Okay. Uh, coming from the uh, the eastern part of Europe, and uh, these ostracos were typical of low uh, of hippo hippo in conditions, and uh, these ostracos. Uh, were found below the Truby formation. The Truby formation we will see in the next uh, slides represent normal marine conditions. So for this reason, Ruggeri proposed the theory of desiccation, a catastrophic model. Um, think that during uh, 60, uh, the theory of the catastrophism theory war was not so um, was not so cool. Because during um, uh, during that period, the evolution, the gradual variations uh, were was dominant in the in the geological idea, uh, because the catastrophe was uh, completely abandoned. And uh, Ruggeri proposed again a catastrophe, a catastrophe at the end of the Messinian sanity crisis. <clears throat> in 1973, Maria Bianca Cita and Stefan Gartner studied the southern part of Sicily, uh, be close to Agrigento or on Ariel Monte. Uh, this this lower most, this southern, southern part of Sicily. And they studied the several sections in this um, uh, in this area. And it's a beautiful picture where we have the um, Truby formation and the Monte Narbonne formation. Truby formation are Marley limestone rich in foraminifera and nanofossils, and the Monte Narbonne formation are uh, clays and mars also rich in foraminifera and uh, nanofossils. And at the top, we, we can see calcarenites, Pleistocene in age. When they started to, to study this outcrop, okay. There's a beautiful place where we have the well-known section uh, Scala de Turchi or Turkish stairways uh, in the Punta di Maiata. The area, the name, the real name of this area is Punta di Maiata. It's well known everywhere as Scala de Turchi. Because during during the 16th century, Turkish attacked Sicily in this part of Sicily, and they abandoned the um, boat along the coast using this, this um, cliff to attack uh, Real Monte and Agrigento. For this reason, now is well known as Scala di Turchi or Turkish Stairway. Okay, um, Cita and Gartner proposed uh, the Zanclian stratotype in Capo Rossello due to the presence of a beautiful out outcrop like this, and they found the contact between um, sandstones that uh, well known in geological literature as Arenat Solo, and above the Arenat Solo, they, they had one, more than 120 meters of uh, uh, marly limestone belonging to Truby formation. So they recognized the several uh, changes at the passage across the Arenazzolo and Truby. So they place an erosional surface at the contact between uh, sandstone and Truby. They place an erosional surface here 
and they recognize that in this uh, Mars, in this in this sandstone, sorry, there were a lot of uh, reworked foraminifera, and uh, ostracots, uh, this also as described by Giuliano Ruggeri, typical of hypoalene uh, uh, conditions, and at the base of the section, just below here, uh, we have uh, a layer rich in some mollusk, typical of uh, freshwater, like Dreisena. So they place a, a boundary between the Miocene and the Pliocene at the contact between Arenazzolo and Truby. So here the biostratigraphy was really good with a lot of foraminifera, in this picture, I will show you Sferdina lopsis and Golbrotalia margarita that represent the two most famous uh, species at the base of the Zanclia. <clears throat> the problem is that uh, um, this, uh, these species represent normal marine conditions. The assemblages described in the Truby formation is a typical of normal marine conditions. While in the Arenazzolo we have a strong variation uh, with the uh, brackish organism, brackish um, deep mollusk and ostracos. So uh, at the contact between the two lithologies, Sita and Gartner proposed the base of the Zanclia. Um, this is probably one of the few times that uh, in geology we use a lithological contact, contact between two, two uh, stages because in the 90-90 percentage of our uh, GSP the contact is inside the same lithology but in a Caparocella we, in Caparocella we have two different lithologies. Um, in the so this is the the boundary the myopliocene boundary that then will, has been proposed as, as Zanclian. Uh, Zanclian the origin of the name Zanclian is from the ancient name of Messina because Messina, uh, a city in the eastern part of Sicily, uh, the Greek name is Zanclia. So. Because Meyer Aymar in uh, 1868 proposed the Pliocene, the base of Pliocene, the name Zanclia, uh, due to the presence of uh, uh, Truby above the gypsum. But uh, Meyer Aymar mi uh, mixed the two lithologies and uh, was not the same uh, proposed by uh, Cheetah and Gartner. Okay, in this um, electron microscope uh, pictures, I show you uh, this is the Truby formation. It's a particular Truby formation where we have a foraminiferal test. And if we can see the particular of the Truby is full of nanofossils, like you can see in these two pictures. So about 10, 15 percentage of a true deformation uh, is characterized by the presence of foraminifera and 90 percentage or more than 90 percentage is, is composed by nanofossils. It's a typical globigerina hoods or nanofossil hoods. So in successively, uh, Zacharias and the, the Utrecht team with Zacharias, Langerais, and Hilgen studied the Caporocello section. They studied the Caporocello section and Heracleaminoa section. Heracleaminoa uh, outcrops look is a little rosello with the Punta di Maiata, and Heracleaminoa section is, is far about 20 kilometers from uh, uh, Caporocello area. So they compare the two outcrops, Heracleaminoa and Caporocello. 
they found this, the same things. Uh, the contact between Arenat Solo, this picture is from Eraclamino and this is from uh, Caporcello. Uh, the Arenat Solo, sandstone, and a ball, the true formation, and they studied uh, foraminiferal assemblages and they found a similar uh, pattern with abundance of spiridinolopsis uh, at the base of the true B formation. But the problem of Caporocello uh, is that Paleomag, um, studied by Langerais and Ilgen, was not really good. So for this reason, Langerais and Ilgen proposed to move and place the base of the Heracleamino the Zaclean at the Heracleamino section. So Caporocello is fantastic for the because we have the wool section that represents the wood Zanclean, but we don't have the Zanclean GSSP. The Zanclean GSSP was proposed and placed at Heraclea due to Paleomac signal. So if we can look this picture, Hilgen in 1991 and uh, in two publications proposed uh, the num numbering uh, lithological cycles. This is the base of a truby. So he numbered each lithological cycle from one here, from one to upwards. Uh, he recognized 95 lithological cycles in the Truby formation. Uh, these two papers are, are fundamental for to understand the astronomical tuning because each cycle was correlated uh, by using a paleomag and foraminifera and each cycle look the the, um, uh, the numbering upwards you can see uh, that this correspond to the paleomag cron subcron so in this picture sorry this picture you, you have you can see tuera the tuera the nunivac sidufal uh, sorry sidufal nunivac and sorry and cochiti so in in Heracleamino section, we have about uh, 56 cycles that are well exposed, but we, we don't have the wool Zanclean. So for this reason, Utrecht team moved to Caporocello and correlate the sections. So uh, Hilgen continued the, um, the numbering in uh, by using Punta Piccola section, is that the the, uh, the ancient picture of the Utrecht team? And if you can see this picture, sorry. So Fritz uh, Fritz numbered all lithological cycles from the base of the Zanclean, obtaining ninety five lithological cycles. So in this way, he built a composite section from the base of the Zanclean to the hand of the true formation. So in this picture, you can see uh, the, the cycles. And in here, I'm, um, you can see the number that correspond to the lithological cycles. On the left, you can see the Tuera, Sidiufa, Nuniva, Cochiti, and the Mamutekena, uh, the subcron that have been correlated in the different area of the southern Sicily. So it was really important that uh, Utrecht team correlate each lithological cycle to an astronomical. Uh, cycle. So if you can see here, each lithological, this alternation uh, between uh, Mars and gray uh, layers or 
um, green, whitish and hard layer richer in carbonate for the Utrecht team correspond to the processional cycle. Processional cycle is co um, uh, co correspond to 21 kilo year. So in this way, they fitting the lithological cycle to the astronomical um, uh, astronomical time scale proposed by Lascar, and the Hilgen theory, uh, Fritz Hilgen proposed that when we have a layer a thicker in carbonate, this layer correspond to eccentricity minima. When we have strong changes in lithological cycles, the cycles correspond to the strong oscillation in astronomical processional curve. So now, uh, at the moment, the boundary stratotype, the GSFP uh, boundary stratotype in Arachlea Mina, uh, is placed just close the uh, camping close to the uh, Eraclea Minua beach in this uh, in this part of the section. You can see with the, this uh, this mark in green mark. But this is the the um, the official just spin. Unfortunately, now today this part of the section has been completely covered by a slide. So it's impossible to touch the boundary. So this is a panoramic view of the Raclea Minua section where we have the Messinian and Klinian GSP. For this, for this boundary, using external astronomical tuning, uh, Fritz uh, proposed an age of 5.33 uh, million years. But the problem is that this slide has completely covered uh, the, the boundary. So for this reason, for this reason, the best outlook now uh, is not in the same place, but just one kilometer far along the beach. So in the other part of the promontory. So this is the ANSET GSSP proposed by Fritz completely covered by Truby, uh, uh, fallen down by the cliff. So in this part, there is a, a, nice, uh, a nice contact, but it's really dangerous due to the slides that sometimes occurs in, during, the, um, during the winter. So now the best outcrop is just behind the promontory. So here you can see the Arena Solo sandstone and the beautiful uh, cyclicity uh, from in a trip in Truby formation. So this part corresponds to the interval where um, Maria Biancacita and Zacharias uh, described abundant speech specimens of uh, spherodinolopsis. So here we can see very well the boundary between Arenazzolo and the Truby, and this number corresponds to the same number proposed by, uh, by uh, Utrecht team. It's really important to uh, put in evidence the presence of a ripple marks in the, sand, in the sandstone of Arenazzolo, and this sandstone cover a layer rich in uh, Dreisena. Sena now is a typical uh, uh, genus uh, that survive at seven per meal per thousand in the Paratetian uh, Sea. Okay, if you, we can look the beautiful section of Cleamina, you, we can we can look on the left of this picture the Truby formation there in Atsolo, and we have also six. Uh, gypsum cycles alternated to clay, soil, uh, gypsarnite, or uh, sealstone. In the clays uh, intercalated to uh, gypsum, we have a lot of species 
typical of, uh, of breakage conditions like ostracodes and also Dreisena that occurs in the layer intercalated to the upper gypsum. So in Oracle Amino, we have the, the head of the Messinian scientific crisis, late Messinian in age, and the tube formation. Here we have, in this part of Sicily, we have the GSSP. Okay, this is David O'Dell, and look, the Dreisena that I show you, this the, represents the, 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 the Arenazzolo uh, member. Okay, uh, Eracle Aminoa is also important for the astronomical tuning uh, of the Messinian, uh, the late Messinian, because correspond to the, the end of the Messinian scientific crisis and correspond to the upper gypsum. Recently, Manzi et al. in 2012 proposed a good calibration of the cyclicity and this upper gypsum correspond to the Eracle Aminoa has been correlated. This, um, this correspond to, to the classical lithologies in Eracle Aminoa in true formation, uh, correlated the cycle by cycle to the summer insulation and below the upper gypsum of the Eracle Aminoa. Uh, in 2021, we published uh, Andretto et al., the first name in Air Science Review. We published that the upper gypsum of the Raclea Mina section and where you can see uh, several uh, abundant specimens of Ippolin uh, ostracots and above we have the tube formation. So the tube formation represents the, the, nor the, the return to normal marine conditions in the Mediterranean region. So the problem is the boundary. Where is the boundary? The boundary is here or not, because we have clays and are not so. Uh, on the field, it's not easy to recognize where, where we have the boundary, because a lot of people think that the boundary is here, the contact where, where we have the carbon, the carbonate layer, the first carbonate layer is not true, because we have the clays that mm, are 50 centimeters thick, below that are reaching for aminifera typical of marine conditions so because each cycle composed by mars and limestone so the contact the messinians and clean gsp is 50 centimeters below the first carbonate bed so <coughs> sorry uh is in in um, in the true deformation is already is really important the return to of siphonino reticulate is a benthic species this that disappeared in the mediterranean region at 7.1 million years ago so this species returned in the mediterranean after the messian scientific crisis and recognized recognized the mediterranean not not at the base of the truby but just four or five cycles be, uh, above due to the um, improvement of uh, environmental conditions in uh, bottom water. So another, another, another time, the picture where we have a beautiful section with the spherodinolopsis. So this interval, you can see cycles one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, correspond to the interval where we have abundant specimens specimens of spherodinia lopsis and we have also the first occurrence of globulotalia margarita but it, it began abundant in cycle 10 in the uppermost part of this section so in 1997 1999 we studied um, a couple of cell of borehole located just close these uh, buildings where we studied the cyclicity in uh, uh, in Truby and uh, we recognized uh, the cyclicity also with uh, strong fluctuations in uh, plantic foraminifera in particular 
we use warm species like uh, uh, Globigerinoides. This speech is a typical of a warm subtropical conditions, and uh, each cycle is characterized by strong variation in abundance. So, <clears throat> in the Truby formation, we have three cyclicities. We have processional cycles, but we have also the uh, centricity cycles that, according to the Hilgen theory, uh, eccentricity minima correspond to an interval where we have uh, where layers are richer in carbonate. But if you can see this the, this panoramic view, we can recognize some particular interval where we have an increasing in carbonate content. According to Fritz Hilgen, these cycles correspond to the 400 kilo year cycle. So the great eccentricity cycle. So in a, in a couple of cell in Raclam in a Raclamina section, we can we can see processional cycles, 21 kilo year, but we can also uh, eccentricity cycle 100 and 400 kilo year. So uh, for this reason, we all this carbonate, the richer in uh, uh, this layer, richer in carbonate, have been correlated with eccentricity minima. Uh, if you look, this picture is fantastic because you can see that the cyclicity is not uh, composed by two lithologies, but we have, we here we have the Messinian and Clean boundary. We have four lithologies that correspond to 21 kilo year or processional cycles. For instance, we have, if you can see the picture, we have uh, beige, white, gray. We have white, gray, white, beige. Uh, the beige like this, and we have white, gray, and white. This one correspond to one cycle of precession. So, <clears throat> in this picture is also really uh, uh, recognizable the white, gray, white, and beige. Okay, according to Foucault and Melier that studied the, this section, uh, the yellowish layer here characterized by B that correspond to beige uh, layer are richer in paligorskite. Paligorskite is a typical mineral, clay mineral, and its origin, uh, according to Foucault and Melier, came from Northern Africa, from Saharan dust. <clears throat> uh, on the contrary, the gray layers correspond to uh, increasing in uh, highlight that correspond increasing of a, a runoff from the northern part of Europe. So for Frédéric Melier, these quadruplets correspond to strong changes due to the monsoon activity in the, in the northern hemisphere. So they uh, measured the clay minerals in Caporosello, but also in other sections in Calabria, for instance, Montesinga, where they found strong variations in uh, paleoskite and kaolinite. So, for that, uh, for the for the scientists, that scientist, uh, the paleoskite cor corresponded to the increasing of dust from Saharan area. So, uh, Caporosello, so as I, I showed before, we have the, the, the full Zanclean uh, stage, but we have also the uh, Piacentian GSP. And we have so the contact between Zanclean and Piacentian. Uh, this correspond to the golden spike that we have in Sicily. Remember the picture that I showed before with the Ediacarian GSP, 
where we have a true golden spike, we have the go the iron spike placed by Fritz Ilgen and Silvia Iaccarino during the Erisha Congress in 1997. So fortunately, that spike is uh, is there, but it's not the uh, classic golden spike. <clears throat> so put a piccola section represent the Piacentian, the full Piacentian stage, but uh, the section of the, the the GSP is here where I have uh, placed my uh, flash. But if you look the picture, you can see a lot of buildings that uh, produce a, a, a slide because they the people love a lot of green and they use a lot of a quantity of water and uh, the clays moved with a slide that co completely covered the outcrop of the Punta Piccola section. So this is a, a, a big problem. So <clears throat> uh, as I explained before, we have uh, the number from the base of the, the tubi and the Piacentian, the Zanclean Piacentian GSP was placed in, in the cycle, liturgical cycle 76 that uh, correspond to the Gilbert Gauss uh, reversal. And uh, is also recognizable by the presence, the first, the last occurrence of Globorotalia punticulata. So you, here you can see a beautiful little uh, cyclicity, but above we have the last Cycle to be 95, and then we have a Monte Narbonne formation. Monte Narbonne formation is a richer in clay minerals. So uh, Fritz proposed to uh, to extend the the number to uh, 112, and here we have the first the onset of subpropels. Uh, in the in the Caporosello. So the the cycle, the lithological cycle one whole two correspond to the first subpropel in the med central Mediterranean. And uh, this cluster correspond to the eccentricity maxima that produce a, a pattern of six lithological cycles. Uh, the cycle one or seven correspond to the warmest period during that time. And if you can see in the uppermost part of, uh, of the uh, Punta Piccola section, the, the subpropels are not so clear. So we have a changing in the uh, astronomical cyclicity. So if you look here, we have the nice subpropels and that correspond to this lithological, and all this part correspond to the uh, Gauss uh, crown. So the last cycle numbered uh, here that correspond to the flash is 112, and above we have other subpropels. Sorry, I could increase. Okay, so Truby, we have subpropels and no subpropels. So according to Fritz, this cyclicity, this cyclicity correspond to the precessional cycles and this correspond to the obliquity cycle. So we have an obliquity forcing that control the uppermost part of a tubi, of the mountain arbona formation. So along the, the section we have the other subpropels, uh, and the last one, A5, the last A5 correspond to the, uh, the Gelasian stage, the base of the Gelasian stage uh, that was uh, uh, labeled as Nicola bed in the Monte San, San Nicola that I will show you after. Here we have an important uh, magnetic uh, change from Gauss to Matuyama. So at Punta Piccola, we have the Vu Piacentian stage, 
but unfortunately, a lot of buildings are covering the outcrop. So this is a big problem for uh, for the stratodite here. And in these areas, a lot of people, a lot of scientists studied the sections, and Beltran et al. in 2011 and 2021 proposed sea surface temperature by using alkenons. Uh, this corresponds to the Punta di Maiata, so they obtained strong changes in temperature uh, comprised between 23 degrees and 28, and they proposed in uh, Punta Piccola. Uh, temperatures uh, between uh, 20, 26, 23. This corresponds to Punta Piccola. This corresponds to the Punta di Maiata. <clears throat> uh, with the Timothy Herbert, we are studying the, the outcrops. This is Punta Piccola, where we have strong changes in uh, uh, plantic foraminifera. Each cycle, show, um, each, each, each lithological cycle has strong changes in foraminifera. In particular, uh, the red foraminifera correspond to warm species, and the blue foraminifera correspond to cold species. Uh, on the left, we have Globrotelia bolognensis. This is similar to Globrotelia inflata. It is now a is a living species, and this Globrotelia bolognensis. Uh, show a particular um, a particular trend with strong uh, fluctuations above all in the sapropels and not found where we have the increase of obliquity forcing it's a really uh, nice this uh, this pattern and here we obtain also with the timothy herb paleo temperatures and we have strong variations between 23 and 27 temperatures and this, the uh, peaks of Globrotalia bolognensis correspond to the strongest peak in SS uh, sea surface temperature. Uh, close to uh, Caporosello, located in Borgo Bonsignore, uh, we have another a similar section that we studied with, where we have the same interval uh, described in Punta Piccola. And here you can see that the Globotelia bolognensis show the highest peak, peaks in coincidence of subpropels. So just a little lesson, other 10, 15 minutes about the problem of the Pleistocene. Uh, today, the, the Pleistocene starts with the Gelasian, but in uh, 2004, up to 2004, the base of the Pleistocene was at the base of the Calabrian. So the problem of the Pleistocene that during that during the conference in 1948 it was proposed that the Quaternary coincided with the starting of the glaciation, and uh, scientists proposed to use uh, Arctic Icelandica and uh, Pseudomusium septem radiatum and Panopea norvegica to recognize the base of the of the of the quaternary. The problem is that Arctic Islandica is an eritic species uh, limited to uh, 120 meters depth. Uh, Pseudomusium septem radiatum uh, is a battial species, but these these species are really rare in uh, quaternary battial. Uh, outcrops. So it's not easy to use uh, these uh, uh, fossils. In particular, uh, this species uh, has been described uh, around MIS MIS 64, but sometimes uh, Arctic Islandica occur before because we have also cooling events before 64. So it's not easy to recognize the base of Pleistocene of the Calabrian by using uh, Arctic Islandica. So for this reason, people propose to use a Nogal Popodrina Pachyderma sinistral form that started in, in uh, MIS 64. 
recently, recently in uh, during the conference in 2004, uh, the bioplastin was moved to the base of the Nicola bed that was considered that during in in uh, by Riatal as upper pliocene now was the gel was involved was uh, correspond to the base of the Pleistocene. So here we can move to the Monte San Nicola Gela. Before we uh, show you that uh, in uh, September uh, we organized that with the Inqua and Martin Ed and workshop focused on the Gelasian stage. Uh, due to the uh, pan pandemic uh, pan pandemic, only 24 people participated to the workshop. Uh, we we went to to the field. Uh, you can see here Martinet, Timothy Herbert, Isabel Calcio, Kenneth Miller. And here we have the GSP, the Nicola bed. The Nicola bed corresponds to the subpropel A5 described by uh, Fritz. So here you, you can see the panoramic view of the Gelasian stage where we have the GSP, the Gelasian stage. And here we have the Wool Gelasian stage and we have also here the base of the Calabrian. So in Punta Piccola, we have the Vul Piacentian. In, in Monte San Nicola Gela, we have the Vul Gelasian. <clears throat> the, we have a comparison, a correlation between Punta Piccola and uh, Monte San Nicola Gela by using the Nicola bed that correspond to subpropel A5 and by using with but we have a lot of foraminifera and nanofossils that permit and paleomag that permit to correlate sections. So uh, if you can see, <laughs> we have Monte San Nicola. Uh, these are the um, uh, courtesy of Capraro that send a field trip guide for the UNESCO workshop made in Palermo in 2017. You can see that the Monte San Nicola section has been correlated with the Punta Piccola, Singa, Vrica, and other sections. So there are a lot of foraminifera and anophosis that permit, and also paleomag that permit to uh, correlate the sections. So the Gelasian GSP was proposed in subpropel A5 on Nicola bed, where we have the Gauss Matuyama. Uh, contact, the, the reversal Gauss-Matuyama Chrome. The problem of this section that uh, now with the, with the team that uh, we, are, we are working, uh, the idea is to collect samples in this part between 2.7 and 2.5 in order to define the magnetic, the geomagnetic reversal, because in uh, uh, in the, in, the, in the paper proposed by Channel 1991 and Rio, the problem of the Gauss Matuyama is that there are two meters where the position of the uh, crown is, is, a, is not clear. So for this reason, we have collected samples in high detail every 10 centimeters in order to recognize the real place where we have the reversal. So uh, Monte San Nicola Gela was also studied by uh, Utrecht team. This is a paper proposed by, published by Becker where they studied the, this correspond to Nicola Bed, A5. They studied this interval where they recognized strong changes in Delta Oitin and due to cold warm period, and they recognize the Sumilankovic cycles. They compare Monte San Nicola with other ODP sites, and they have the same things as a good correlation between the different plays in the Mediterranean Sea. So, the Gelasian, if you look at this picture, this number corresponds to the subpropels. Uh, A5 corresponds to Nicola bed that correspond to the 
Gauss Matuyama chrome traversal. <clears throat> In this interval, we have a lot of foraminifera biohavens and anophosis that permit high, uh, a good correlation in different places in the Mediterranean. And if you look, we come back in a, a couple of cellular section. This is the section studied by Mariamia Kashita, but we, I have studied the, this part of the um, Monterey-Bone section. And uh, here we have, we have also the Nicola bed that corresponds to the subpropel A5 and the composite uh, section made in uh, between Punta Piccola and Caporocello permit to obtain uh, cyclical fluctuations in foraminifera. In, in red, we have warm species and cold species in uh, blue and uh, like Neogolbogodina pachydermas in x 4 Global Arteria Schitula. And uh, it's important to find, I have found Nergal Bogodina Atlantica here in this interval that coincide with the glacial maximum between 2.55 and 2.4. The same thing described by Lawrence, if you look at this previous picture here, just above. The base of the gelasian, we have a strong increase of Nervil Bogodina Atlantica. This species has been considered by uh, Berggren as a polar, pol polar species that correspond to MIS 196. So before the, the Calabrian, where it was placed in 2000, the base of the Pleistocene, we have uh, a cool period that correspond to the uh, expansion of ice sheet in the northern hemisphere. Sorry, the last pictures. Okay, so uh, here we have Neogolbogodina Atlantica. So by using foraminiferal fluctuations, we, can, we obtain the same number proposed for marine isotopic states. So, this interval corresponds to the Nervil Bogodina Atlantica and MIS 64 to the increase in Nervil Bogodina Pachyderma left coiling. We have also the first the common occurrence and first occurrence of Globotel inflata is a good marker that permit to uh, recognize the uh, biozone MPLC, MPL6 biozone. <clears throat> In this section, we have also the first occurrence of a large Gephyrocapsa and uh, the first occurrence of a Gephyrocapsa oceanica uh, that approximated, uh, approximates uh, the base of the Calabrian stage. So in this section, uh, we obtain also <clears throat> value temperature and we have strong variations uh, between MIS 61 and 64, where we have a strong changes in temperature. If you look during 2000 and 2.6, we have the, the lowest temperature are 19 degrees. Above, we have temperatures that uh, reach 14 degrees. So we have a strong changes. So this part corresponds to the where for the first time it was described the occurrence of Arctica Islandica. So look the strong changes. If you look uh, MIS 196, we don't have strong changes in paleo temperatures uh, as between 1.9 and 1.5. So this corresponds to the all the the uh, then the, the worsening of uh, climatic conditions. <clears throat> so this is the, the same thing with the paleo, with the deltoitin and SST, and compared with deltoitin proposed by Lisicki and Raimo in the Atlantic Ocean. <clears throat> okay, with the cold species, uh, the increasing, the same thing. So these are unpublished data. Uh, this corresponds to the Globigerinoides uh, warm species. Uh, so peaks are the warmest period. And uh, if you look the correlation with the uh, 
Lisicke and Raimo and the sea surface temperatures obtained with alkenons, we have a nice correlation where you can see strong variation that correspond to the strong the, the strong changes in uh, plantic assemblages, in particular in warm species. This interval is well recognizable uh, by this uh, strong period in where the temperature uh, decrease. And here, if you look the percentage, we can see a strong reduction in the highest um, peaks of, a of warm species that correspond to this one. So there is a good uh, correlation between uh, alkenones and foraminifera. Okay, um, this picture, Maria Biancacita, Alessandro Bossio and me, and I will finish my presentation with this picture. In this picture, we have Valentina Yanko. A lot, <clears throat> sorry. Friends from uh, um, Ukraine, Russia, Georgia that came in Sicily to touch the Pleistocene. And uh, sorry, because for the war, uh, sorry, uh, there are a lot of uh, friends that at the moment are in Ukraine and above all uh, Valentina and uh, other people that now study the Pleistocene. Okay, for me, sorry, sorry, it's all, thanks. Um, I can Thank show you. Very you. Much. you should uh, sorry, sorry, show us the yeah. video. Yeah. Sorry, Laya. I was crying. <laughs> no, no, no. I understand. Uh, and I think we all share the same feelings. Uh, what's happening is horrible. Yeah. And, um, uh, sorry, I won't show you just a, um, uh, a, a video. Uh, if you look, just uh, the video of the, um, uh, of the Gelasian stage. Sorry. Sorry. Just five minutes, no, just the one minute. This is the Gelasian stage, this is the represent the base of the quaternary. Uh, just here, this layer corresponds to the Nicola bed. Okay. Beautiful video. Who was shooting the video? It's a friend of mine that um, is specialized in drone. drone wow. We use drone only for research, not for the war. <laughs> <laughs> yes.